morning welcome to the daily is your breakfast show where we keep you updated with the happenings Nigerians despite the challenges that is going on presently well for Nigerians in spite of challenges a statement from Zodima says Tinebu putting in place policies to address country's current economic challenges very soon Nigerians will be jubilant about how Tinebu has managed to navigate the waters more details of his statement can be found on page 2 Strike not eminent, says ASU. Federal government suspend taxes on imported food items. The crisis in Southeast region reducing under Tinibu Kanu tells ECOWAS Parliament. Logistics challenges, flooding, cost of fuel queues. This is coming from NNPC Limited. NPC ready to conduct census waiting for presidential nod. Coming from the chairman, more details can be found on page 9. Pro UK lawmakers give Governor Fubra seven days to represent budget. More details can be found on page eight, and that's all the news on the Daily Times newspaper. On Nigeria News Direct, Ogun Road's previous administration has good intentions but abandoned projects coming from Abiodun. World Finance Award 2024 Zenet Bank wins Best Commercial Bank retained Corporate Governance Medal. Details found on page eight. Three days after abduction, Kaduna journalist family still in captivity, no contact established, with the writer saying as Dahono community resident desert their homes. Ensure you rescue our colleagues on hurt coming from the NUJ tax the government as well as security agency. Journalists shouldn't be target of kidnapping coming from the AYCF reacting to the kidnapping of these journalists. And we've seen that police still combing forests to rescue victims coming from the PPRO. That's the police PRO. More details found on page 2. And for scarcity, NNPC blames weather for disrupting movement of PMS. And Rachel, this is the second paper. I wanted to hold on before we discuss it, but I just can't hold myself back. I recall before the rains. You and I were discussing what the government needs to do because we've seen that each time the weather is this way when it's raining season, we always have issue of fuel scarcity and we have NNPC always blaming it on mm -hmm. flooding. Yeah. I categorically remember saying that especially the Kogi road, which we know that is one of those major roads that we mm -hmm. use for transporting either food in or outside the country and as well as fuel. We know that it's more like the center of the entire country. Mm -hmm. So it's more like a place that we pile we pilot between Kaduna, um sorry, Abuja, Kaduna, um, Lagos and like down to the east precisely. Mm -hmm. And then here we're seeing NNPC blaming the flooding. And I recall when we're saying that, what are the measures that the government can put in place? We know that the road there is very bad. The potholes, they are terrible, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And something needs to be done about that. And I was hoping to see the Minister of Work walking on that road, especially before the rain will become this bad, because we know once it's raining, you can't really walk so much on the road because it will mess up the entire work being done. And here we're seeing NNPC. So for how long are we going to keep pushing the blame on either the weather or the road or flooding or anything whatsoever? Are we not supposed to look for measures by now on how to prevent all of these things from happening? So we're trying to say that the more the rain continues, we are going to keep having fuel scarcity until maybe September, October. Is that the body language we're getting from NNPC? So I'm just hoping that let's stop. Um, you know pushing things on things that we know that is inevitable definitely there is going to be rain whether we like it or not mm -hmm. so what are we going to do what are the measures we're putting in place do we have other higher roads do we have other higher bridges that maybe this truck can actually use without it being disrupted by rains and all of that so i'm looking forward to seeing us having intelligent measures on tackling certain things rather than pushing the blame on nature and we know that we cannot stop nature from actually doing this work eventually actually Chesele, until we have um good roads i believe that this is going to be a problem continuously every year i remember 2022 where for seven days we have these tankers or truckers being stuck mm -hmm. on the road and the road the local um kogi road this road that is being plied most especially was covered with water for about seven days mm. and we know that we didn't get petrol supply 
down here and there was this massive scarcity until the road was being able to like dry up and even after that the damage was that the water made the um the the, the tad road to like come up you would almost think like an earthquake happened <laughs> just on that road and all of that the alternative dear seller just as you said we can't do anything about the rain because it will come and go regardless of what we do about it but what we can do about it is good roads definitely if our roads were built properly regardless the weather is not supposed to be a problem because activities are supposed to go on season in season out rain cannot stop you it means that the problem is that the roads are bad and it also means that the federal government needs to create more road linkage mm. we need to start creating more alternatives more options more routes for people to follow so that when perhaps there is a problem on this part people can take another way and then be able to find their way most especially when it comes to um and distributors for petrol precisely because mm -hmm. it's one of those things there can be delay in the transportation of maize rice any other thing but not petrol because once there's a mini delay it becomes a problem because now we have opportunities distributors we have fuel stations that will now hike the price mm. because they manage to have it available there's hoarding there's scarcity and all of that and then before you know it people have been exploited we we see that um, we should not have uh, we should not go for any panic buying but nigerians are just in the position where whether you want to go on a panic buying or not you have to because that's the only way for you to be able to you know help yourself Understood. because you can see the danger ahead it's all about our roads Sele, and i believe that apart from the good expressway that we have the the government doing it's also important to look at these roads that without them there's always a cut in the chain of supply yeah, we look forward to seeing what the government will do about that Theater Nigerian News Direct Rivers Assembly lawmakers strike back, confront Fubara Uva alleged constitutional violation. Data found on page two. Federal government suspend tax on rice, maize, and other stables. Data found on page seven. And that's all on Nigerian News Direct newspaper. On the Punch newspaper, queues spread as petrol hit 1,100 near to a litre in Abuja and others. Marketers awaiting products from NNPC says pet run details can be found on page 22. Narrow weakens to $1,523 to a dollar at official market. More details can be found on page 21. Human rights, democracy, economic growth, key issues in Samoa agreement. Still on that issue, you can find details on page 2. The big story, federal government suspends food import duty, partner states on farming. Government launches five-month duty-free import window for maize, rice, wheat and others. Federal government partner governors, military to cultivate arable land, support smallholder farmers. More details can be found on page 21. Called Bad River CJ from accepting impeachment notice. Details can be found on page 29. Um, local airlines project 918 naira to a liter aviation fuel. Meet Dangote. More details can be found on page 21. We have a picture story and a headline that says outrage as Russian missiles kill Tatutri in Ukraine Children Hospital. Details can be found on page 21. And that's all the news on the Punch newspaper. Vanga newspaper starting with the big news federal government opts for duty free import of rice maize wheat and other grains it will impact on inflation coming from the NACCIMA a step in the right direction from the CPPE and then we're having farmer action aid boss react concerning that more detail of all this can be found on page five Banks borrowing from CBN skyrockets by 458% to 57.5 trillion naira. And we have 72 hours after abduction, fate of Kaduna journalists remain unknown. Zenet Bank wins the best commercial bank in Nigeria and best corporate governance award. UBA GMD appointed chairman, body of bank CEO, state of on page 8. 
and we have end of the road for nine billionaire kidnappers in Lagos data found in the paper called Bass Rivers uh, Chief Justice Clerk from accepting a more or less impeachment notice. And on first scarcity, NNPC are blamed logistic flooding as petrol queues grow longer. Team Nigeria ready to soar at Paris Olympics, Sport Minister hands over contingent to the NOC. More detail on sport can be found on page 30. And that is all on Vanguard newspaper. On Nigerian Tribune, federal government mulls 150-day duty-free import window for food commodities. The writer says set to import 500,000 metric tons of maize with orders to tackle inflation. May suspend duties, tariff, taxes for importation through land, sea borders coming from um, the NACCIM. And then we have Hills Federal. Rather, the NACCIM hails the federal government's decision. Details in public space not yet formally released. Statement from the presidency. More details can be found on page 4. On flood, NEMA deploys officers to reinforce search and rescue nationwide. NEMET predicts three-day thunderstorm and rain across Nigeria. With increased monthly allocations, states should abide by new minimum wage when legislated. Coming from Apabio, more details can be found on page 2. Zenit Bank wins Best Commercial Bank Best Corporate Governance Awards. More details can be found on page 6. Dog eats flesh of girl's head attacks owners trying to protect victim in Ibadan. On Ondo Guba, crisis brews in PDP over composition of campaign council. More details can be found on page 16. Contractors handling Denro Shashi Akute Road must complete job in two weeks. Statement from a border. More details can be found on page 8. Police arrest man who climbed 125th mass to commit suicide over hardship. More details of this story can be found on page 26. Called Bath River CJ Clark from dealing with pro wiki lawmakers. pro wiki lawmakers give FUBARA seven days to represent 2024 budget. pro FUBARA assembly screens and confirm commissioner designate. Police silence over suspect behind explosion baffling. This is a statement from the governor. More details can be found on page 15 and that's all the news on Nigerian Tribune. On this day newspaper, Zenit retained Best Commercial Bank in Nigeria, Best Corporate Governance Awards. And we have minimum wage, a PABIO says states rich enough to pay, coming from the Senate President, more detail on page 10. And also in River State, pro wiki lawmakers give FUBARA seven-day ultimatum to represent 2024 budget. Petrol price soars to 900 naira to a liter in Lagos. Orders as queue resurface at Philly Station. Worsening in Abuja, NNPC blame logistics and flooding. Why Ipman falls NNPC monopoly high export charges. More detail of that can be found on page 9. To contain worsening food crisis, federal government may suspend duties tax on certain imports. Measures aimed to mitigate impact of reform may include 150-day duty-free import window, guaranteed minimum prices of commodity, restocking of National Strategic Food Reserve, and then we have NACCIMA hills the move coming from the federal government. More detail in the paper. We have a picture story, APC Governor's Forum Visit Party National Chairman. We can see the people present there. You can do well to get the paper in more detail of any other story that is of interest to you. On Leadership Newspaper, National Assembly mulls death penalty for vandals of national assets. Zenit retains best commercial bank for fourth time. Details can be found on page 25. Trending federal government set to increase core members' allowance and numbers. We have backbone to invest $172 billion in Nigeria's infrastructure. Details of the trend and numbers can be found on page 2. Stakeholders caution federal government over ban on used vehicles importation. Bandits in hijab kidnap 25 persons in Katsina. Details can be found on page 4. The big story for scarcity and NPCL marketers passed the buck as queues spread. 
Motorists stranded, black marketers flood Abuja Street. Supply portal down, we can't make order. Statement from Petron. NNPCL blames logistic challenges flooding for scarcity. Details can be found on page 4. Northern elders youth condemn kidnap of journalists. Haina escapes from just wildlife park. Details can be found on page 16. Falling trees kill four at Edo Market. More details can be found on page 23. Islamic Council once again disrespecting Sultan. Details can be found on page 20. And that's all the news on leadership newspaper. Well, I hope that the uh, management of the Joshua Life Park will do all that. I, I mean, I saw it yesterday, it's like later until yeah. this morning. And especially people living around the wildlife park, they are mostly at risk because I will really recall there was a time that a lion as well escaped yeah. from there and then it took a while. And then, you know, we're not really advanced in this part of the world whereby there is a way. It's a smart way because if my knowledge will serve me right, I don't really think they took that lion alive back. It, it was killed and so eaten. Exactly, Rachel. Fact, that yes. is my concern. <laughs> it's supposed to have, there's a way you get these animals back. Maybe there's this um, injection, the sleep, there's this better way, the yeah. way, um, one that has been designed specially for this wildlife yeah. animals and then you put them back. So I hope that nobody somewhere with the hunger have killed this hyena already. So we I hope that it hope will be captured not. back and then people should because I've seen, the I've seen the cycle and saying that everybody should remain calm, just be very vigilant and then not to, we know the hyena can be very, very dangerous and wild. So. We need to do what is needed as well. I think this is a call to the management to do something about the animals. Rachel, when you visit the wildlife park, you know that these animals are hungry. They are. They're not well taken care of. Yeah. And so, and as well, the security there is not really that tight for these animals to get to escape. It's not like they are free. They are being caged. So I wonder how it made it out. So I think this is a time where the management of the wildlife park should do something proper keep these animals safe as well their life matter we yes, don't want to start losing these course. animals to other people that are hungry bushmeat is available mm. to some people so i hope that all sure. that is needed and i hope the hyena will get to be rescued back to the cage and it's actually a big animal for those who know the actual size of hyena all of that so i think residents should also be very very careful because it just means that there was carelessness from the ends of the authority and then the, the wildlife park keepers, if I must put it that way. So I think it's, it's very necessary that the people around should be very, most especially little children. Mm. There are a lot of theories on how to get rid of that animal be that there's just way that you can scare it away but i don't think a child can do that maybe an adult can find that way so i think um children should be the one that parents should watch to worry about most especially for that area and we just hope as you said said that it doesn't end up dead because it would then be in the port of some people by the end of the day and it's not supposed to be like that because they are not supposed to be treated in that manner so i just hope that the authority does something about it that we will not hear that again about another animal in the future mm. because such things we don't forget it the lion own might have been a very long time ago but we still remember it clearly like it was yesterday and then it shows that there is carelessness because it mm. shouldn't even happen even for once by mistake it shouldn't happen so i just hope that we have some good news by the end of the day. Honestly, I just hope so too. Well, let's take a look at the next paper, which is the New Telegraph newspaper. Federal government suspend duties, taxes on food items for 150 days. We have NACCIMA hails the decision, says it will mitigate food inflation. Says Dangote Elumelo not representing OPSN in Economic Council. More detail found in the paper. We have Senate Bank retain our what is best in commercial banking and governance. Tunje Audrey say relocation of correctional center needed for prison service reform. You can do well to read that as well in the paper. Custom collects 1.23 trillion naira at Lagos Ports, seize containers of expired drugs. 
Nigerian social economic challenge is due to lack of investment in education coming from Peter Ube. Biden tells Democrats in Congress he wants to drop out so we can find more detail of that. On page 5, we will record a number of people saying he should drop out because of his age and other things. So you can do well to read more detail of that on page 5. And on World Population Day, Nigerians' resilience on 18-year-old census data misleading policy decision coming from the Nigerian um, Population Census says timely head, uh, headcount required to generate reliable data that will address various population groups need. And we've been saying that over and over. I wonder when we're going to have our population, our own census in Nigeria, but this is a concern. So you can find more detail of that on page five. Disruption in ship to ship transfer of well flooding reliable for queues coming from NNPCL as petrol price hit one nine hundred naira per liter. Data found on page four. Alleged 423 billion naira fraud erify Kaduna Assembly to no fate July 17. And on Ray Project, federal government plans to get funding from China coming from Alkali as National Assembly malt debt penalty for rail vandals. Why Tinibu will benefit from Emirate crisis by Kano APC, Dita Fan on page 7. And on the Rivers crisis latest, Pro Fubara Wiki speaker lawmakers hold parallel seating where we have some writers for the industry under, more detail on page 2 and 4. 48 hours after whereabout of abducted Kaduna journalists and families unknown, Northern Elders Ariwa Youth are demanding the release of these journalists. And we have a study that says soya food good for developing kids' brain. No wonder we have a number of mothers trying their best to get soya meal for their, you know, their kids. So you can do well trade more detail of um, how good soya is for brain development in kids. More detail found on page 7. And that's all the new Telegraph newspaper. On the metric newspaper, Zenith Bank retains Best Commercial Bank in Nigeria and Best Corporate Governance Award at World Finance 2024 Awards. Joseph Pacero tip for return as Super Eagles coach. More details can be found on page 16. Return of Q's NNPC Limited calls for CAM, blames logistic challenges, flooding for fuel queues. Details can be found on page 3. Amid soaring costs, federal government suspends taxes, tariffs, import duties on food commodities. Police arrest man who climbed 125th mass in Abuja in suicide attempt, claiming the reason behind that is hardship. You can find details of this sad story on page 3. The big story, rivers of crisis. Again, fresh twist in March. Admit parallel sitting, Fubara legitimized Oko Jumbo led assembly. A Mali led assembly bars Fubara from spending from state's account. State High Court orders Fubara not to recognize pro wiki legislators. Details of this back and forth can be found on page 2. Why ODIEC postponed on the LG election indefinitely? Report from the chairman. Customs generated 1.02 trillion naira in six months. Report from the official. 1.2 billion naira case EFCC files appeal against five shades ally others acquittal. You can find details on page nine. Dangote reiterates commitment to start PMS production in July. You can find details on page 10. We have a picture story saying collaboration, where we can see the Lagos State Governor Babajide Saolu receiving the European Union permanent representative to the Sahel region and the EU ambassador to Nigeria, Samuel L.I. Supi, during a courtesy visit to the governor recently. And that's all the news on the Matrix newspaper. Right before we continue further with the paper review, we would love to take a break and let you just go through the stories and drop your comment and your views on any of the story that is actually appealing to you. Please stay tuned with us. We'll be right back after this time out.
Make your everyday informative. Make your everyday count. Know your world. Daily affairs, national and international, with authentic news events as they unfold on Global News and Zuma Nigeria, Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. Thank you for staying tuned. It's still the ladies. We have been looking at a number of stories on the paper. The crisis still happening in River State concerning the pro wiki um, team, as well as we're seeing that um, they are telling the governor to represent the 2024 budget again. And we're seeing that uh, the president's looking at giving a 150 days window for taxes of um, crops, grains that will be coming into the country. We have quite a number of other interesting and appealing stories on the paper, which we will love you to actually contribute by dropping your own views on any of the story dates of interest to you. I still have Rachel with me. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome, sir. All right, let's continue with the paper review, looking at the Guardian newspaper. On 2023 budget performance outlook, unfunded deficit hit one trillion naira in nine months, worsened federal government fiscal position, where we can see the debt servicing from 2022 and then the growth, as well as our recurrent expenditure, our capital expenditure, our revenue, and then our fiscal deficit. All of that can be found on page six of the Guardian newspaper. Ex-General tax federal government on new wage demand caught in governance course to advert crisis. More detail on page 6. So beyond the Senate president stating the fact that there is an addition on allocation coming to state, the call for them cutting down on the cost of governance is very important so we can have enough to take care of everybody. NNPCL Ipman blamed private depot logistics for scarcity. Data found on page 3. 72 year old man backs live jail for defining a minor that's on human angle. Do well to read that on page 8. OB urges anti craft agency to focus on grand theft. Fear over illicit flow to banks as shareholders struggle with rights issues. And EEDC to reform 11.8 billion naira to Southeast customers. Data found on page 7. Student loan NAS give tertiary institution 48 hours to submit data. We will record there was a, a hole on that. And then yesterday we seen the number of tertiary institutions, especially from the state level, that are expected to submit. And we're seeing that NAS, that is the body, talking about the Nigerian student body, that is saying that they are giving tertiary institution 48 hours to submit all of this data. More detail can be found on page 30. Man clams Marx to protest economic hardship in Abuja, data found on page 4. And federal government approves 150-day duty-free window for import of selected food items. More detail found on page 3, and that's all on the Guardian newspaper. On First News newspaper, Kano NNPP rejects use of suspension, Concursal's expulsion. Cholera surge Lagos stops with 104 new cases. Nigerian banks lose 468 billion naira to fraud in the first quarter of 2024, a report you can find inside the paper. Abuja residents decry long queues as well persist. The big story of Fubara fights back, bold moves to counter merely led Assembly's seven day ultimatum as fresh court order restrains Rivers Chief Judge Assembly Clark from dealing with pro wiki lawmakers. Concerning hardship, Tenable's government unveils comprehensive measures to tackle high food prices, suspends import duties, tax on rice, wheat, maize, and others. 
EFCC boss vows to intensify fight against corruption as NANS pays solidarity visit. Russian missile killed Tatuan in Ukraine um, got Kiev Children's Hospital. We have a picture story where we can see Ms. Ozi Konwa, UNDP Africa Regional Director, discusses partnership with Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwolu during her visit to Lagos State House. This happened on July 8th, that is yesterday, and that's all the news on First News Newspaper. Daily Independent Newspaper, Colbert River CJ for accepting pro wiki lawmakers' resolution. Lawmakers give Fubara seven days to represent 2024 budget. Sitting of SAC lawmakers in legal coming from opposition reps. APC has done well. Current situation is global coming from party governors. And the big news here see federal government rolls out measures to crush high food prices, suspend taxes on importation of food commodities to import 250,000 um, tones of wheat and then 250,000 also um, metro tones of maize detail found in the paper. Resident grown as well scarcity persists in Abuja and Lagos, and NPC blames development on flooding logistics challenges. Rivers crisis. I'm not ungrateful, Governor Fubara clarifies as Equime shareholders declare support for the governor. More detail found on page six. Zenit Bank wins double award as well finance 2024 award. Carter Jones Aerofy sealed against Kaduna Assembly till July 17. No tenor elongation for Rivers LG Chairman Appeal Court rules on that. And downside of the paper, two dead 18 rescued in Chikawa board Miss Harp Dita found on page six. And that's all on Daily Independent Newspaper. On the Nation newspaper, contractors get three months to fix 260 federal government road projects. Lagos account for 104 out of 113 cholera cases in one week. FHC CJ declines Yahya Bello's bid to transfer case to Kogi. Zenit is world's best in corporate governance. Details of both stories can be found on page 4 and 7. Brace for more flooding, Nime tells Lagos, Ogun, Oshun, Edo, FCT, others. More details can be found on page 4. The big story, reverse crisis deepens. Amali let lawmakers issue governor seven-day ultimatum. Fubara inaugurates ESCO member cleared by Okojumbo to others. Called by CJ Clark from dealing with 27 assembly members. You can start with the details on the front page. 11 Americans discover Nigerian roots at NY Accessory DNA event. Details can be found on page 3. Nigeria aired 26 billionaire invest investigation. EFCC quizzes Ethiopian Airlines CEO. Nigeria owing us 211,000 US dollar. Sirica breached agreement. More details can be found on page 2. On those ships cancel poll indefinitely. Details can be found on page 5. NSCIA 6 PEP in insecurity battle. More details can be found on page 4. And that's all the news on the Nation newspaper. On the voice of liberty, four banks open bid to raise one trillion naira from capital market. And on 2027, Uzi Banjo Amachi must bury presidential ambition coming from the ex APT chief tides. Detail of that can be found in the paper. Coming from Kaduna State, Erufai versus the House of Assembly called adjourns to July 17 for hearing respondent application. And on economic hardship, Tinibu approves massive free importation of major food items to overcome the high prices. President Bola Tinibu has approved the duty-free importation of major food items like rice, maize and wheat to caution the impact of high food prices. Nigerians have been gabbling with since he assumed office last year. More detail in the paper. And on protest, group wants against Kenya model in Nigeria. Yoruba elders reject agitation for Yoruba group. Yoruba elders reject agitation for Yoruba nation. Detail in the paper. 
Still coming from River State, Fubara wins as appeal calls strike out suit city seeking tenor extension of pro wiki local government chairman. Fubara wins as appeal calls strike out the suit seeking tenor extension for pro wiki local government chairman. And on alleged 80.2 billion naira fraud, EFCC uncovers the Ayabe loose plan to escape Nigeria. Immigration put him on watch list. More detail can be found in the paper. And that's all on the Voice of Liberty. On Daily Sun, Mba approves 1.9 billion naira for payment of teachers' four year leave allowance. The big story federal government more suspension of tariff taxes on rice, maize, and others to provide 150 day duty free import window for food commodities may okay importation of 250,000 metric tons of wheat and maize. NACCIMA Hill's decision hits impacts on inflation. From EFCC, CJ rejects Bellows case transfer request. Details can be found on page 6. Customs rakes in 1.02 trillion naira at a papa port intercepts 11 containers of expired and pharmaceuticals and orders. More details can be found on page 25. Rivers crisis called by CJ Clark from accepting impeachment notice against Fubara from Omarley led assembly. A minimum wage government defense defense offer to labor more details can be found on page 27 gunmen killed three vigilantes passerby in emo and that's all the news on daily sun newspaper richard the writer following that story is quite um, i don't know what people's reaction will be on the minimum wage where the government defends the offer to labor i know the writer is not quite clear but i can yeah, see what is written it. they describe it as balanced and realistic and then a Pabu and Abbas are seeing states can pay. Now, is it a 62,000 Naira or is it a 250,000 Naira? That is realistic and balanced because we've gone over this over and over. The fact that with the present situation, reach at 62,000 Naira will not go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what makes it realistic or what makes it balanced. If it is the 62,000 Naira, they are really I believe talking it's about, 62, of course, Naira Rachel. Said, yes. So I'm wondering how far, <laughs> how realistic. We're already seeing that even former generals are coming to say, you know what, this will not go anywhere. You need to do fast and round up the issue of this minimum wage so that Nigerians can actually have a better way. If 62,000 Naira is going to be enough, I don't believe the president would have gone that far to put 150 um, days for you know, removing of tax for imported um, commodities yeah. selected, especially grains. So I wonder what is balanced or realistic about 62,000 there? It, Sele, like sometimes when we see certain things from our lawmakers and our leaders, you're speechless and you just can't help. What is the rationale mm. behind them saying it is actually balanced? Because it is not. And we know where their stance is concerning. So we know they are not working with what Labour is saying. On the other hand, we saw in the papers yesterday, Labour still insisting that they are accepting nothing less than 250,000. And there was never an agreement between the federal mm. government and Labour. All we know is a division, what the private sector is saying, what Labour is saying, and what governors haven't even said, and what the federal government is it's okay well. out of the meeting before it couldn't hold anymore because labor wouldn't stand 62,000 anymore. They know it, just as you said, Selem. If everything is okay, all of the extra things you're doing won't even exist in the first place. If all is well, we wouldn't need CNG bosses. We won't need pilates. Why are we having wage awards if things are okay? Mm. And then why are we having ex uh, taxes and then duty free importation into the country for a long period of 150 it means the government will be losing money More the revenue ex this exactly for this period to curb inflation so it means you are very much aware that uh, inflation is flying outrageously and the cost of living is going high there is a food crisis going on in the country you are very much aware of what is happening so how would 62,000 be reasonable it, 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 there is no how it can be reasonable because even you there is no guarantee for sure seller that these 
tax-free or duty-free importation will curb inflation is more of a trial and error to see okay if we are able to penetrate the market and bring in this um uh, products food mm. commodities precisely and we take off the things that could warrant to it being higher will it be able the government don't know for sure if it will be able to tackle inflation it's kind of a uh, let's see what it is at the mm. end of the day and then it's, there is no guarantee for sure and that is why there is no way you can sit down and say it's reasonable. Labor's 250,000 is more reasonable because there is a precise breakdown of what it will do. Why are we not seeing that from the federal government? I mean, how do you want the household to spend 62,000? We would like to see that kind of breakdown, that mm. sensible breakdown of what 62,000 will be able to achieve for a common Nigerian at the end of the day. And when we're still having the issue of um, ban A, with the increase with the in tariff, electricity yes. tariff region and there may be for someone like me that love chips where we're having a bag of irish potatoes is almost Fair fifty thousand or yes. more depending on where you're so imagine that is for somebody living close to where it's where it's afford, afford, yeah, afford it. so imagine true. sending it over to some people living in ports lagos and the likes how much will you get it so I hope that the government will be very realistic as well. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at what is happening in the world of business from Business Day newspaper. Nigerians' private equity investment up by 322% on energy and e-tech. Federal government opt for food importation to cease cost of living crisis. Zenet Bank backs the best commercial bank four times in a row. NNPC marketers blame logistics as petrol scarcity disrupt businesses. Downside weapon smuggling, such raise a fresh security concern. So the issue of insecurity is becoming more as we're seeing that more weapons are being smuggled into the country. We hope the custom and everybody that is by the border will actually do something to make sure that all of these are being intercepted. And that's how far we can go on the program this morning. Thank you, Rachel, for doing You're this with me. Sorry. And as well, thank you to our viewers. Thank you to every other person that made this program a success. We we'll look forward again to doing this tomorrow. Do have a blessed day ahead.